In today's video, we're going to go over creating an icon for disabling and enabling sound in Figma. This is the final result. And as usual, if you'd like to save time and support the channel, make sure to check the link in the description. And now let's get started. I'm going to start by using the rectangle tool by pressing R on my keyboard and then clicking once to create a rectangle. I think this one is going to be about 20 by 20 points and then I'm gonna set the fill of this square to zero or also black. Next step would be actually duplicating it so this means I'm gonna select the square and then press command D to create a copy of this, move it over here so that they meet precisely with their edges like this and then I'm gonna press enter and by that, I'm gonna enable the shape editing mode on the second rectangle. You can see that I get these four circles, these points, and also these icons over here have changed, which reflects uh, the tools that I have at my disposal when editing a shape. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select these circles on the right. Well, at first the top right one, and then I'm gonna move that upwards by about 10 or maybe 20 pixels, something like that. And then I'm gonna press shift enter to commit the changes and I'm going to do something similar again press enter select circle again and move that downwards by 20 pixels by pressing shift and down arrow this will be the basis for our icon and next thing I'm going to create the arcs that will represent the sound waves so let me just use an ellipse tool by pressing O and then clicking once again I'm going to enable the stroke this stroke is going to be four pixels circle is also not going to have a fill and I'm going to align this stroke to the center and then I'm going to change the size so that the height matches the height of this, this shape which is in our case 60 pixels so let me just adjust the values to 60 by 60 pixels or points it doesn't really matter then let me press enter again select this leftmost point and remove that one and again I'm going to press shift enter to commit the changes and I'm just going to move it over here like this and as you can see we will have to probably reduce the height of this sound wave which means I think let's go for like I don't know about this size and on a second thought I think I might actually increase the width of the shape so let's go for maybe even eight and move that from from this shape so I think yeah about this or we can go for 26 by 52 so that these edges are precisely aligned to the top and bottom of this overall icon which now means that we are ready to create the second sound wave I'm gonna do that by again selecting this arc over here and then pressing command D changing the size to whichever you know value feels right I think a value where this space between these two arcs is approximately the same as the width of these strokes. I think that looks best. So let's go for about this size. I think that most closely matches the ideal proportions. I think maybe a bit bigger. This is of course highly subjective, so it doesn't really matter um, like what specific values you put in. Uh, there is only one criteria and that is it needs to look good for you and or for your client, of course. And then I'm also gonna around these corners on this shape which means selecting it pressing enter selecting these two corners and then rounding them over here in the design panel I think we could increase the height of this so let's go for like 30 which means reflecting this in these two points as well so let me just adjust those yeah I think we might have we might have to reduce the width this overall shape and I think we have overdone it with the height. So let me just do a few adjustments. Again, highly subjective. For me personally, these proportions look best. So I think this is re ready to go. Uh, let me just group this. So I'm selecting all of these and then I'm going to press Command G to create a group. And I'm going to name this group Sound Icon. To rename an object or a group, simply press Command R and then start typing as you can see over here. So that's how you rename an object. In our case, that's sound icon. Now let me use the pen tool by pressing P on my keyboard and then I'm gonna click once, hold down shift and click again in about this area. You can see that when I press shift, uh, the angle of this path kind of locks into 15 degree increments and then I press enter and add a little bit of stroke. I think we should match this 
with this stroke over here, so that would be eight. Um, yeah, and then I'm gonna just change the color to red so that we can easily see this cross again against the icon, right? So this is gonna be black in the end. This is gonna be, that's the way it's gonna look, but just for now, so that we can position this correctly, let me actually turn this to red. Since this is 60 pixels tall, I'm gonna use that as a guide and select this line and type in 60 by 60 in the design panel over here when it comes to height and width. Awesome, so now that this is done, let me create a square or a rectangle actually by pressing R and clicking. And these dimensions of this square over here are gonna be the same as this icon, which is 65 by 60, 65 by 60. Then let, let me position that precisely aligned with the icon. Move that to the bottom by pressing Command Option Left bracket and then actually extending this a bit towards the right so that we get um, 69 points in total, all right? Not intentional, by the way. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is duplicate this vector. So selecting it once, selecting it, and then pressing Command D. I'm gonna move that few pixels to the right and then selecting this vector as well as this rectangle, right? So these two layers, and I'm gonna go over here to subtract selection. Uh, this is what's gonna happen. Let me now actually move this towards the background. So again, select this subtract layer and press Command Option left bracket so that it's moved to the very background. Now we need to select all that we have created and turn that into a component. This component is going to be called Mute Unmute Icon. So let me rename this again, Mute uh, Unmute Icon, Animated Icon. And it's going to have two states. So let me actually add a variant. And this variant is going to be Mute, while this one is going to be Sound On. With the second Mute state. Let me expand this variant, select this subtract layer and then also the sound icon layer. Select both of these like this by pressing shift and clicking, right? And then I'm gonna go over here to create a mask from this. Or I can also use a shortcut, use as mask, which is control, command, M. So control, command, M. And this will happen. It will mask our sound icon, which is intentional. Also, let me actually do the same here. So again, selecting subtract and sound icon, masking it. And then let me just from the subtract shape, let me remove the layer called vector two so that our mask is actually, you know, showing the full icon, right? And then also this will vector one shape. I'm just gonna press shift and then use the left and up arrows to move this outside our icon right? So to move it somewhere over here. I'm going to also change the color of this stroke to zero, which means black, and the opacity of this color to zero as well, so that it's fully transparent. Here I'm going to do something similar, except for the opacity on our fill. It's just going to be black like this, and that is our finished mute state, right? Now we actually need to define the animation, which means I'm going to go over to prototype, and then I'm going to select the first variant, and connect the first variant to the second variant like this. That would be on tab, change to property one mute, and we're gonna define that this is gonna happen smart animate, right? Smart animate 300 milliseconds. And then we're gonna do something similar with the second state. Again, connect that to the first state and go for on tab, change to property one, sound on. Also smart animate, also ease out 300 milliseconds. Next thing I'm gonna do is again, use my frame tool and create a frame that will be 1000 by 600. I'm gonna rename this test frame. And then I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go over here to assets and then click and drag this mute unmute component over on our test frame. And then I'm gonna center this against the frame by pressing option H and option V. So now it's in the center. I'm gonna select the frame, launch the prototype and see what we have created. You can see that I'm getting a phone around our frame that is not intentional. So let me just go to prototype with this test frame selected and under prototype settings, let me actually change the device to none. 
that should fix the problem, right? And we get this frame right here. And now when I click this icon, this is what happens. When I click it again, it reverts back to the initial state. So I can click to go back and forth. One small adjustment, I think this could happen a bit faster. So let me select the component and then press enter and under interactions, I'm gonna change both of these interactions timing to 160, so 160 milliseconds. Yeah, I think this looks better. Um, also, since I'm recording my screen, I think that might affect the performance of Figma and therefore the speed of this animation. So um, if you get a different behavior for the value that I have just put in, which means 160 milliseconds, <clears throat> definitely feel free to adjust this to any value that looks best to you. As always, the key is for the final result to look good to you and your client. And this is it. This is the final result. Again, if you'd like to support the channel and save time, make sure to check the link in the description. That will take you to my store. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.